This is it. This is the beginning. This is how over 500 people from Brooklyn and Queens are starting their morning on a bus headed to Washington, D.C. I woke up around 5 a.m. this morning to make sure I get ready and on time to catch the bus. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting, so yes, I am very excited. Filled with those of every age and background, more than 10 buses from Brooklyn and Queens are on their way to join a multitude in the nation's capital. <laughs> all protesting the Roe v. Wade decision that legalized abortion in all 50 states. Once the diocese arrives, they head to Constitution Avenue, where they will march past the Capitol building right to the foot of the Supreme Court. It allows the nation to see us as a diocese together, united, and under one banner, which is to preserve life. I've been marching since 1978 myself, so it's important for me to instill this in my children. I, I think it's great that everyone's defending life. I say pro, you say life, pro, life, pro, life. It's us and about a couple hundred thousand other people. But you know the diocese of Brooklyn because we're all wearing these bright red scarves. When people get together, we have a voice. Power in numbers. So the more people that come, the more that shows that we care about this and that we really should do something about it. We have to be able to get, get a big enough group so other people will be able to uh, follow us. Babies, yes we do. We love babies. How about you? The diocese is united with each other by the color red, but also united with the crowd by purpose to stand for the unborn. For life, protection of life, this is the essence, the essence of our, our faith, you know. I come here on behalf of the babies who can't speak for themselves to tell people that it's wrong. The babies that die every day, like, you know, they could grow up and do so much for the world, but they don't get the chance to because they're killed. Every life is a gift. It's the theme of this year's march and points out that even those diagnosed with an abnormality in the womb are sacred. Tragically, eight in 10 of these unborn children are killed. The gift of life is clear to Maronite Catholic Bishop Gregory Mansour and to the girls from the Mary Lewis Academy. Even if they have disabilities or if something's wrong and they're not what we call normal, their living and their breathing is just powerful to other people. We need to show that every life is worthwhile and every life is precious from, uh, from conception to natural death. And it's a persuasion. It's a loving persuasion. Everybody's a sinner. Everybody's made mistakes. Many people here have participated in or had abortions themselves. So, and they, they come repentant and they come with lots of love. When the youth group from St. Gerard Magella reaches the end of the march, the Supreme Court, they stop to pray for those aborted and for those who have participated in abortions. Spirits soar as their prayers are joined with the multitude around them, confident that God will hear and the slaughter will end. <laughs> it feels amazing, I don't know. It's like, I can't really explain the feeling. It's just beautiful it's that we all could gather in the name of God. The more people get the voice out, the more people proclaim the faith, and the more people pray and gather in prayer, then all things are possible in God. The march has been going on for more than 40 years, and the attitude is very positive that one of these days, there will be no reason to march anymore. For Currents from Washington, D.C., I'm Katie Breidenbaugh.